<laughs> Meanwhile, I'll be talking. So, hello everyone, nice to meet you. Uh, I am Dina Farmat from here, Hungary, and uh, I would like to talk about uh, bringing collaboration, cooperation uh, into Elm. The story behind this, uh, this when, when I encountered Elm, uh, it was great to see that uh, such games and uh, editors can be developed uh, with such uh, minimal accidental complexity. Uh, but I, there was something I was missing, these kind of shared signals, so, so that I can uh, say very uh, easily that uh, the value of this, this signal, signal is, uh, is just shared on the web, because uh, Elm is uh, a language developed for the web, uh, and uh, the internets are all about uh, connecting people and uh, collaborating. So uh, let's start with a demo. Uh, Oh, those resolution things are, uh, I just try to resize in a reasonable way. Yeah, on OS X, resizing is also not, uh, ma maximizing stuff is not reasonable. So we all know that stamping is great. Uh, this is <laughs> an official L uh, sample, but Stamping is even more fun together. So <laughs> let's try this. Uh, let's pretend uh, we are two users on different computers. Uh, that will be through different browser windows in this setting. So I stamp there. And the other user sees my modification. And if I do it there. The other side. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's a good uh, notice. Yes, so <laughs> uh, now uh, stamps can be uh, done together. And uh, this is uh, all done uh, with uh, the integration of a service uh, called Firebase, which is a storage uh, service, if uh, I may use also buzzwords <laughs> here. Uh, so it basically uh, offers uh, uh, storage where uh, everybody can write data and it uh, pushes the data changes as real-time notifications to uh, every client that is connected uh, to this central server. <coughs> uh, so I thought this is really suitable for, for an uh, event-based uh, system like Elm. Uh, a bit of architecture. <laughs> Every architecture uh, diagram should be zoomable, I think. <laughs> uh, so uh, Elm communicates with Firebase the following way. Uh, writing data to Elm uh, can be done via, via some simple REST API. Uh, this is uh, easily achievable uh, using the HTTP library in, in Elm. Uh, I showed it in code, uh, but first the high level overview. And uh, the notification, so the reading, uh, which is done entirely through notifications, is done via the JavaScript uh, for a function interface. Uh, this is the main part of integration, and uh, there are some uh, pitfalls there, uh, which uh, I would like to mention. So uh, I just show some very basic, super superficial code. Uh, let's try this. No, yes, maybe a bit uh, bigger. Okay. Uh, maybe first the JavaScript blue code because it's, it's very minimal. Uh, uh, even one. Okay. So we connect to the Firebase. Uh, <coughs> we uh, obtain the Elm uh, modules handler and handle. And uh, when uh, a child event uh, has come, then we send it 
event uh, to Elm. Uh, we process this uh, here, we import the foreign JavaScript uh, event. Uh, we do uh, some uh, glue code that uh, <laughs> better matches this whole dynamically typed JSON structure. Uh, this is one uh, room for improvement, uh, that uh, these kind of uh, better match, uh, matches uh, could be done by a monadic for syntax or some kind. Uh, uh, that's also open for discussion. Uh, <laughs> then, then we just uh, collect these uh, process, so uh, modeled uh, in Elm events and uh, display them. And uh, for the uh, outgoing stuff, it's even simpler because one just has to uh, use uh, this request stream. Uh, serializing the data with uh, the built-in JavaScript uh, functions, it's, it's very easy. Uh, there's a, a bit of a catch here because, uh, you know, these uh, default values uh, to avoid undefined uh, signals, uh, because of them uh, we have to uh, include these special cases when, when it is the first default value, then do not post uh, the event, just uh, issue a get request uh, or, or something that uh, does not have a side effect. Uh, and uh, we map the, you, the mouse clicks uh, to these uh, HTTP requests and, and we are all done. So very simple, uh, but uh, as we will see, uh, there are some uh, drawbacks. Uh, I will talk about them later. Let's uh, see another demo <laughs> because it's fun. Uh, it's not uh, very polished, <laughs> uh, but it's also an official uh, Firebase uh, tutorial, ba based, based uh, on official Firebase tutorial. We, we can zoom. Uh, yeah, yeah. A chat. Yeah, there are uh, lots of kinds of uh, types there uh, in the storage, but if we append one to them, then we get them on bo both users. Yeah, so this is a uh, very proof, proof of concept. Uh, to uh, return to the previous example, we can inspect uh, the data changes uh, on uh, Firebase's uh, web interface, called Firebase Forge. Uh, whenever uh, we write data, not in this, but here, you can see that it's updated in real time. Yeah. Uh, child deleted events are not uh, processed in Elm, so uh, it, it can't be done, just adding. <laughs> but uh, I, I think that's enough. And uh, you can see that there, these are real, indeed, uh, simple JSON structures. Uh, so this is the demo. And uh, I would like to uh, talk uh, shortly about uh, what consequences uh, these can have and, and what, what are the possibilities of, and so on. Uh, what what uh, really is appealing that uh, this can be done entirely on the client side code. So just using Elm and a little bit of JavaScript code. Uh, because Firebase and other alternatives, there are also alternatives, uh, offer uh, that they abstract away this uh, aspect of your software that uh, you have to set up a server, you have to handle the REST uh, requests and, and, and this synchronization uh, because, because it's re really hard to do to write. But they did this in a reusable way so uh, we can um, use their service. Uh, entirely with, with client side code. Uh, and that also means that not only the graphics, but, but also the, the data, the persistence uh, part uh, of our uh, software is uh, developed with, with minimal accidental complexity. So, uh, so that's what uh, I think is, is very important. Uh, nevertheless, uh, there are some limitations uh, due to the state of the art of, the, of Elm's uh, JavaScript uh, FFI. Uh, there is no way to uh, declare uh, shared parameters or configuration between the JavaScript and Elm code. So if you want to share the same uh, URL, for example, uh, 
there is no way you can see in the code that uh, uh, if it happens to be the same URL uh, or they're derived from the same URL, URL then you have to du duplicate it because there is no interlanguage uh, communication, but uh, it could be done uh, by modifying this built-in syntax of the uh, foreign si signal declaration. And the uh, other uh, drawback is that uh, it is not a simple plug and play or uh, just import it and, and, and use it because uh, if you inspect the JavaScript code, uh, you have to uh, get the L modules handle uh, depending on its name. So there's also this other way communication uh, data flow between the JavaScript and the Elm code. Uh, it's I don't yet have an idea how to overcome this, but it's open for discussion also. Uh, and, uh, and what kind of, of data uh, events, because there are child at the value, modified, deleted, uh, so on. Uh, this has to be modeled uh, in a generic way and, uh, and then it can be used uh, more in a more reasonable way because now it's uh, just an architectural pattern <laughs> like, uh, those design patterns in object-oriented programming. So, so it's not just uh, I import it and, and use it. Uh, one has to do a little bit of configuration and not a write once uh, code, but, uh, but uh, it has to be implemented uh, every time uh, if you want to implement this kind of uh, functionality. Oh. But uh, if you think of it, uh, this is great because uh, it uh, is a step to connecting the real-world applications to Elm because, uh, you know, for example, games uh, are uh, great, but uh, when I heard some critics about this Elm that, uh, okay, you can move Mario around, but uh, what's the use? Uh, if you think uh, an, ap an application, uh, a serious application is not much more, just there is shared data, which is versed on servers, uh, and it is now possible, so, uh, you can do uh, collaborative editors, uh, shared drawing, stamping, uh, Google Drive, to-do list. Uh, it, it will be interesting to, uh, to do this. And, uh, and multiplayer games, uh, complete and standalone applications. Uh, for example, it would be also interesting to implement Pong uh, here. And uh, this uh, comes to the question uh, with which I would like to close uh, this uh, short talk that uh, someone has to uh, animate the world, uh, in Pong's case, the ball, uh, but uh, of course, uh, much more complex structures in a, in a more complex game. Uh, and the question is that who has to do this? Because everything is on the client, so uh, who is responsible for updating? And uh, of course, in the history of uh, collaborative games, uh, multiplayer games, uh, there is much research in, in that field that, uh, that who should update the world, so not the state of the individual players, but the shared world. Uh, so we could borrow these ideas and uh, integrate, uh, incorporate it in, into a future uh, version to, to have this also possible. And then I think uh, Elm uh, will be a much more uh, appealing, so uh, more uh, viable to real-world applications. So that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I also think so. <laughs> so how, what would be your wish list for improving the F5? Yes, uh, I have not uh, told this through <laughs> very uh, deeply, but uh, I think these are the three key points that, uh, that uh, sharing uh, constants, first constants, then, then I, I, I don't know, uh, not so static uh, data between these, just the, the signal declarations and, uh, and the JavaScript event processor, uh, then, then this kind of, uh, other side communication, which I showed, uh, that uh, mm, pass, passing the, the Elm, Elm uh, JavaScript handler, Elm DOM handler uh, to JavaScript, 
and uh, and this third to to process these uh, untyped uh, JSON records uh, and neater syntax and uh, so other possibilities. So of the, of the priorities, mm -hmm. this is like which library sharing comes like HTML and JavaScript integration. Ah, so and that's so among the, those so ideas. I, I said I was having trouble modifying your JavaScript generation code. What I was looking at was prototyping what it would look like if we were to have inline JavaScript right at the place where the FFI declaration was done. Yeah. I, I because it seems, on the list what? I didn't mention that on the list. Some, I remember seeing someone was like, oh, what if we yeah. had a little, mm -hmm. a little setup function that ran? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, want, I want to <laughs> write it in code so I could just say, hey, you can download this and fork it if, if, you, don't, if you like it and if you don't, then ignore it. Yeah. But, I, but for the particular questions here, what, what one thing we're thinking about is right now, the, when you initialize a module, you really don't get any, any information about what inputs it needs and what outputs it mm -hmm. gives. Um, and so one concept is when you initialize, you actually give a record of I'm listening on X, Y, and Z inputs from the world, and I get out as a result, uh, I'm giving values on these things, and you can mm -hmm. attach them. That's one concept that would mm -hmm. at least make it a little cleaner. Um, yes. And another is like the reason now there's no sharing of values across was early on I was like, I don't know what uh, values are going to look like internally. Of course. So I just was like, for a later day. And so it's that later day is, is approaching very quickly. Mm -hmm. So being able to share numbers and strings and all these in a nice, simple way where you just say, okay, this is portable or this is uh, something that is something that like is very important to do for example yes, I, yes I support it, yeah. I was wondering have you tried um, exporting a constant signal to to share a constant from Elm to JavaScript? Uh, you it's tricky because Uh, uh, so, so to defer the the registering later, uh, you mean because yeah, this listener registration has to be done then later. Yeah, maybe maybe uh, it theoretically it, it can be done, but uh, but so this kind of imperative code is, is, it could be such messy that you get yeah. the event and then yeah. assign and so it's, it's, it's just. Theoretically, it might, it might be possible, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, but I, I haven't even tried it because it, yeah, uh, sure. it's spaghetti. It's, it's not yeah, yeah. ideal, but it, it might be possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for really simple static configuration, yeah. it would be great to define an interface for the Elm part, the JavaScript part, and yeah. to and be, able, be able to come up with it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So on the same side, what about, you talk about libraries and interop. Do we have plans to make it easier for us to create and share custom native JavaScript modules? Or is that something we'd like to keep to the standard library? So uh, I don't think I, I think that will come later. OK. Yeah, so it's something that I think is important, but it's something that like right now, Official policy is if you ask me, uh -huh. I'll tell you how to do it, and it's making clear that like I'm going to bring that later. Yeah. Okay. So it's just a matter of getting that stable and deciding to actually sort of architect this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Yeah, that sounds also something that could be dangerous because if you write your code wrong and it's stateful right. and it has side effects, and then you yeah. call it from Elm like it's a pure yeah. function. So this is why. I is because like someone can come along and be like, well, actually, uh, I want to do it this way. Are there actually pure functions in the FFI? Can you actually create a pure function that calls JavaScript from the FFI, or are they always single? I thought uh, they were in the languages. So, mm -hmm. oh, because like the string, like the string library, <laughs> the native dot string, 
Yeah, so some of the core libraries will have native. Yeah, yeah just for performance. Well, or because you're too late to re implement it. It's more for like sometimes you need to deal with JavaScript primitives. And like, if you want to talk about JavaScript strings, like you can't just like convert concatenation to the correct JavaScript code without actually doing the same. Thank you.